most of my success had to do with building other people's dreams, other people's companies. For me now, success is to kind of be at peace, bringing, waking up with joy already, not looking to have to hear from anybody, but in my prayer life and how I see things and to be able to channel that through art. And art is a very personal thing. And even when I was building this collection, I always asked myself, um, are people gonna like it? Are people gonna gravitate to it? Have I done my best? And I think all my life I always asked myself, have I done my best? And I've always tried to do my best when it came to the outside things in life. Uh, but have I been doing the best inward for me? I have careers that totally uh, allowed me to be creative. When I lived in South Africa, the king of Swaziland named me Sabelo, which means gifts from God. I always was able to do what I wanted to do creatively, and that allowed me to travel around the world and love what I did. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, I was working uh, on the PUSH conference uh, with uh, Jesse Jackson, and I was responsible for the concert. I remember that, that morning, which was um, January 12th, uh, uh, 2010. I had been having back pain for like a whole month. And I thought it was because I was working on it with the weights. But that evening I fell. And that's when my journey started. I fell because I had a abscess that was pressing against my spine for that long period of time. And I didn't address it. And so um, about the time I got to the hospital, I had to do emergency surgery where I woke up and I was paralyzed from the waist down. The three doctors the men came in and they, the next morning to Mr. Elcock, can you move your toes? And I wasn't able to move my toes. And uh, I looked at the doctor and I said, well, what does that mean? And he just looked at me and shook his head and walked out of the door and he never answered me. Um, then the next day, the women came, three women. And they said, Mr. Elcock, can you move your toe? And I moved one toe. They rushed me out of where I spent like three months in uh, rehab at Mount Sinai. So all for three months, I didn't have feelings in my legs. In a wheelchair, people having to move me, bathe me, uh, everything but feed me. There was times where, oh man, I can't even talk about it. It was like times where I had to really um, trust people you know, really trust them. So I began to realize that God is favoring my life because now I'm being who he wants me to be, not who I want to be. That whole journey of learning how to walk again is a most humbling experience. I was in my wheelchair and I was playing the music and I was kind of spinning around in the chair and I lift my legs up and I thought, did I just lift my legs up? And as I lift them up for the second time, the class started uh, walking in. Boy, they was clapping, people were crying, they was running up to me, and boy, I, like a little kid, I went racing out of there to go find my doctor to show him I could lift my leg, you know? And that was the beginning of really saying, that this thing is gonna happen for me. I, I leaned on that and that's where the healing eyes came from because I was being healed through other people's eyes. They saw me getting better, so I was getting better. Um, they saw hope in me, so I saw hope in myself. So those eyes, so mostly all of my artwork is just eyes, you know, and they're blue eyes, they're teary eyes, and a lot of Sometimes people will say, are there tears of joy? Some of them were tears of frustration. Some of them were tears of 
joy, happiness, and I try to dictate that in my color scheme. You know, if there were blue tears, it was ocean, and that made me feel serene and made me feel comfortable and whoever was dealing with me at that time. So the healing eye, that's, that's where that actually really came from, is to, to be able to trust people by looking them in their eyes. For the most part, I look at it as a gift that God gave me. Right, and that kind of that gift kept me alive because I remember most times when I started to go there, my thinking, I just pick up a pencil and I just started drawing. You know, I wet some paper and it crumbled and it turned into some texture, so I started to do collage-like figures. I remember one day um, I challenged myself and I took paint and I poured it onto the canvas and I just started twirling it, you know, and it always twirled into a face. And even if that face wasn't somehow perfect, I'd take my fingers and I'd pull the nose out, I'd pull the eyes out. So I call that my spiritual pain. And then some of the stuff I actually did with my eyes closed. I like to go to like a burn center or a cancer center or uh, places where people are having to learn how to do something all over again or work through pain. I want to teach like a 30 minute art class on how to heal through art.